Today, we're gonna to be talking about five common mistakes that people make when doing PPF. Let's get into it. Since we've launched the do-yourself kit for the three and the Y, we've had a lot of feedback and it's been really, really good. But we see a lot of the same problems over, over and again. And so this video is exactly for that. And these are problems that not only you guys will have, but also professionals. And these are something that I also had when I was learning and even to this day. And we're gonna get right into it. So the number one common issue that I see is not being enough, um, not being generous enough with your spray solution or slip solution, right? So a lot of people kind of like think that if they just put a little bit and then they have their PPF, that's gonna be good enough. But you really just wanna douse that area. Like every single square inch of this panel should be sprayed. You also wanna spray on top of it. The reason why is if there is no right, water or slip solution, what's gonna happen is it's gonna, you could damage the film, but it's just not gonna slide well, right? And it might, you know, it's, it's kind of like slow. Whereas if I have the slip, it just glides just like that, right? If I go too hard, you could actually create lines on the film, so you really don't wanna do that. The other thing I like to do um, after I'm done spraying is I got this new film right here. I got film right here. I wanna show you some other demos. It's like, gonna put this on. If you don't put enough, what's gonna happen is you feel that, it's just gonna do that, right? So it's just not gonna be enough for you. But if you have enough spray slip solution, just like that, um, I think in the video, we call it a shimmy shimmy. Uh, what we like to do is we kind of move it around like this. And you see that if I don't hear any like tack, this is a tack sound, right? So you don't wanna hear any of that. So you, you see on the top, I didn't spray it, you can kind of hear that a little bit. Don't be afraid to, to spray. So I just accidentally dropped my PPF squeegee and that gets into the next common issue is introducing uh, debris. So I think one of the common um, ways that we actually introduce dirt is through this because a lot of times like it falls on the ground, you know, and this place is super dirty. We keep it in our pockets. There's like, it's, it's also dirty. So what I like to do when I'm installing is I put a PPF squeegee like this inside a small bucket with water so it's always clean. So when it falls down, you put in the water, make sure it's clean. If you got dirt though, um, we wanna kinda go over like, how would I get rid of that dirt? So if that happened, if it's been a day and you found out, that's gonna be probably too late. But if it's within that hour and you found, let's, let's say like right all the way up here, you found a, a hair, debris, whatever that is, um, you have time and it's up to you. Um, you're always gonna be risking it a little bit, introducing more dirt into it. However, if you feel adamant and some massive like hair, like, you know, I would definitely recommend getting rid of it. So it, like I, I let this sit for about like five, 10 minutes. So what you do is like, if this is the start of it, you wanna go ahead and spray a lot of slip solution to get your started. Make sure your hands are clean, right? We always tell you to wash your hands and then kind of peel that and as you peel it, um, you can peel like this corner, but don't hold on to that corner too long because you're gonna stretch that corner. Then you hold a little bit more like this and be generous with your slip solution. And you can see that this settled. This side did not settle as much, but you can see this. So as you kind of lift, you're gonna spray slip into this. And again, be generous. And you're gonna keep lifting, okay? You're just gonna keep lift, lifting like that. And then if you want, you can actually change your nozzle a little bit so it's a little bit more aggressive, right? And you wanna just keep going until you get to the point and you see the hair. So you're gonna be tempted to just stick your finger up there and grab that hair and bring it down. Um, I would highly not recommend that. I mean, like for me, my hands are pretty freaking dirty and you know, you're gonna be introducing more dirt into this area. So instead, once you get to that point, what you wanna do is have it on the spray nozzle, the aggressive, and let's say it's right here in that corner, you wanna just spray into that. And what you're trying to do, like spray directly into it, just like that, is that's gonna agitate it. That, that spray is gonna agitate that area and follow it. Make sure you see it exit. So if, if that worked uh, and it's going down, um, great. Like th things like dirt usually come down pretty easily. Um, one thing is like dog hair, cat hair, those are really, really fine and because you squeeze it into it, it almost sticks to the adhesive on the inner side. So what you need to do in those cases is if you had that, um, you know, 
I would use the edge of the squeegee, make sure it's in the bucket, dunk it. This is a clean squeegee and you go in and you're gonna use that tip, try not to touch any part of that and you're just gonna agitate it. Just that area like so, okay? And then once you do that, it should have dislodged because you agitated it. And then after that, you can kind of spray into that and then see it go down. So that's how I would remove the debris. And then after that, you wanna go ahead and go back to your spray, spray mode, all right? And one thing is in our, in our course, we actually go this way. So actually I would recommend you to go the opposite. So if you went this way, then I would go down that way and go ahead and squeegee you downwards, All right? And sometimes you'll see this line, um, like a difference between like, this is slightly lighter, this looks darker. And the reason why is because that's been sitting like that um, for a while, there, there's like a, like a two tone right here. Um, that's gonna eventually go away. And by doing that, you're gonna be fine. Uh, you don't have to worry about it and then you're good to go and you have a you know a dirtless ppf install but again this is a risk i just want to warn you that again for like the third time um you know if you really can't live with it we actually sell you the the piece again at cost so you don't have to pay like full price or anything like that we understand we get it you want a perfect install so just reach out to support at testbros.com and we'll hook you up okay so the next problem or like common mistakes i think a lot of people have this idea that you need to use heat all the time. And they kind of think that this is vinyl, right? So a vinyl is a color vinyl. It is a dry install. It's not actually um, a wet install like PPF. And people get the heat gun and start heating it and think they need to do all that. So for example, like the Model 3 kit, we have it in multiple pieces. And the reason why is we've actually cut it into areas that need to be stretched. So that piece, for example, for the Model 3 has minimal stretching. So that's why we don't use heat. Um, however, I mean, pe professionals do use heat. Um, but for me, I use heat mostly like, for example, like the hood edge. And I only do that because I need to expedite it. Like I need the car, you know, done in a few hours. Then I could use a heat gun and get this down. But in our video, that, in our course, we actually say, you know, just wait an hour and after it come back, it'll be dry enough and then you can push it down. So you really don't need to use heat. Um, and on, on the other hand, um, if you do need to use heat, I like using like a hot water. So I'll put like hot water in this tack solution if I'm doing like a one piece mirror or something like that here. And that hot water really keeps it nice and uh, stretchy. Um, or I use a steamer, right? And the steamer is nice because again, it's moisture. It's not like a heat gun where it's just dry heat just going in. Be careful. And the reason why I say be careful is that especially when you burn the film, uh, you can burn the film and it'll get really too soft and then it's kind of like harder to work with actually than easier. The next common issue that we're gonna discuss is bubbles. So why do we get bubbles in the first place? A bubble looks something like this. This is obviously not even squeegee, which is a big reason of why you get bubbles is a lot of people may go like squeegee and they forgot to overlap and they went here and then they they went like that, right? So they left this like area right here and then now they have this bubble. The other one is like, you know, I went really soft. I'm just, just kind of doing that, right? Instead of like going aggressive, you're just kind of soft. Yeah, you're just too soft. So you need to, you need to make sure you're a little bit more aggressive. Sometimes like air pockets. So maybe you have a tack point and you could actually go towards that tack point. And because it's tacked, it can't escape. Right, that's why the tack points are so important, right? To have the right area. And sometimes they might leave some bubbles there. Uh, one thing to differentiate is there's two kinds of bubbles. There's moisture bubbles. So moisture bubbles is like things like this, right? Because there's actually moisture and your slip solution, right? Under there. Um, we typically say like anything like under a nickel um, is going to dissipate over time. It'll evaporate. So typically you wait like one to two weeks and it'll be gone. And then the other type of bubble that we'll talk about are air bubbles. And air bubbles typically happen um, a lot of times when you don't have enough slip solution either, right? Because there's air trapped and then, you know, as you're squeegeeing, you're trapping that air from within. Uh, those are a little bit different story. They're actually not going to go away. So if you have air bubbles um, and you see it like, you know, shortly after your install, um, try to get it out. If it's a big air bubble, you know, go ahead and you know, try to peel it up, get some more slip solution in there and then really get that down. So I think the most common, I'm gonna purposely try to make a bubble here. Okay. So 
But that's a pretty massive bubble. Like, it's not realistic, right? Because, like, you're going to be able to see that. But maybe, like, something like this. If you haven't tacked this area, uh, you always want to exit the bubble towards the area that don't have to tack. So, for example, like, we we tacked this point right here. You don't want to go towards here because this is not an exit anymore because it has settled, right? Because you use the tack alcohol solution right here. So that's not going to go anywhere. But for example, we haven't added tack like under here. So this would be the exit. So if you have a bubble like this and it hasn't been long, uh, what you could do is actually spray a lot of slip solution underneath. Spray some slip into the squeegee. You can use a squeegee like this and then just go down. Just hard like that. And you want to be kind of aggressive into that and then you'll get the bubble out. That usually works if that doesn't work and it's a giant bubble, um, kind of like the same thing that we did earlier, you can peel it up a little bit, you know, just like we did when we're getting rid of debris, spray into that. And if you did the same direction, you know, I did it this earlier, so I'm going to go this way and then go ahead and get that out. So the best solution, I know it sounds counterintuitive because when you see the bubble, you want to kind of get it out right away. But honestly, the best decision is actually to leave it if it's not a giant bubble um, and just let it dissipate over time. Like if it's out in the sun, it should eventually, one to two weeks, it'll dissipate. So the other um, reason why sometimes you get bubbles is if you actually have debris um, and it's like, it's an actual, like it raises the PPF, right? Because there's actually something under that um, or like a paint chip. And the, the reason why paint chip does raise it up is Sometimes you'll have a paint chip, you'll get a blunt force that hits a car. The, the material needs to go somewhere. So it kind of has like a little bit, it goes up and that's why it creates that bubble around it. Before we kind of move on, um, you've probably read, there's a lot of like forums out there that like talk about you know, how to get rid of bubbles. Um, and there are some ways to get bubbles like a syringe, that's a common way. But I don't actually recommend it for do-it-yourselfers, I think, because um, for people who do it like frequently, you have to kind of go at an angle because if you go like straight in, for example, you're actually going to go into the paint so that can also damage it. And the other couple ways that people do it is they get like a, they poke it. Um, that's also not really recommended. Again, could cause some damage trying to, you know, fix this really, really small bubble. So um, I would kind of steer you away from that just because of the risk that it entails. Um, if you are really interested though, I mean, we could do a, probably a separate video for more of a professional side of like, okay, how would I get rid of bubbles? So the last issue that we're going to be talking about are going to be fingers and you could call it wrinkles. Um, in the industry, they call it fingers, um, which are these, right? These that you see. And the reason why that happens essentially is because there's enough material, too much material bunching up in that area. So you can stretch it across right to get those fingers but sometimes you can't because it's already like set so what would you do in a setting like this so first of all um, you want to just kind of make sure that there's again a lot of slip before you do anything and if there is this i'm going to go ahead and try to get it all out kind of work it that is not going away if that happens Typically, it doesn't actually happen there because we've kind of stretched it across. But if it does, you know, you kind of want to douse that area with tack solution, which is going to be alcohol solution and water mix. And just going to, I do this thing where it's like slowly in and outward. There you go. Got smaller. Cool. And then... And that's what you want to do. You kind of want to massage it. Sometimes you kind of hold it down just a little bit. One other way you could do this, let me get my finger back. Same thing, right? You want to spray a lot of slip solution underneath. And then once you get that slip in there, you want to get some tack underneath. Uh, and then you want to either use a little chiseler, chiseler that we provide and then wrap it with microfiber and then just kind of work your way out. Okay, 
But what you're doing with this is um, you're soaking up all that moisture because that moisture isn't going back, which will make it tack a lot easier. So that's essentially what you're doing. Um, sometimes you see that it actually came back. Just be patient. Like, don't lose patience. It's okay. And then sometimes it helps to just hold. I'm going to use microfiber. And then there you go. So the other kind of fingers that you get um, could be like, like in the wheel wheel sometimes. Um, the reason why is, you know, maybe there's just not enough stretch or the distribution of stretch and then it kind of left this a little lonely and it's just sitting there. Um, for a finger this size, this is about, you know, maybe like an inch, a little less than an inch really. Um, this should be fine for you to push down all the way. Um, it'll also be easier because normally our kit is going to be right to the edge, so there's not going to be all this hanging right here, right? So this is the same technique, but you want to spray some slip into that, and then some tack. And you want to just kind of push. And be careful to go slow, because if you go too fast, and I'll show you what happens if you go too fast. And look at that, the fingers went away. If you go too fast, okay, I'm gonna spray some slip solution over, and you went, what's gonna happen is it's gonna bunch up like this, and it's gonna be permanently damaged, like that. And you see this line right here, and it's not gonna go away. So that's kind of why you kind of I do this not like this because if you go like this and you go down, um, that's a problem for me because you can't actually see what you're doing, right? So if you go in this direction, you can see exactly what's happening and you could kind of push that down like so. Uh, whereas if you do this, you just can't see anything. In PPF, we, we say something called divide and conquer, right? And <laughs> what that means is like this is like two inches wide, this finger. So if you bring this down, it's going to be incredibly hard to get that down. That's just too big. So instead, you kind of split it. You split that finger and instead work this one and then work that one. And then you could even split this one a little bit more. So instead of having one giant finger, I've split it into three uh, half inches. The reason why fingers happen is there's not enough material, right? If you pull this, you can see that this finger, right? But when I pull it this way, I get more fingers here. So you, the, the best way to kind of fix this issue is kind of distribute that stretch the right way so there's not like all the material. So the main thing is, you know, make sure you watch our video. We also have a guideline and a, and a, and a PDF that you can download. And we actually have tack points and where you need to stretch and all that. Definitely follow that and that's going to help with that. So like a finger might pop up maybe an hour later or something like that. Um, one thing you could do is you could actually do a dry, just kind of use your finger, like assuming this is dry. Um, you could actually get like a, your finger on a microfiber like this and just kind of work that out and just hold it once you get it out. But letting it dry like that may, will make it stick a lot easier. Um, same advice on this one, don't go fast with your finger real fast. It's going to cause um, a line and you don't want that. Just go slowly, work that, you know, if you can see that and see what's, what's happening. If you see that it's creating that line, kind of fall back a little bit and then work your way kind of a little different angle and then you'll get that finger right out. So guys, that pretty much covers the five common problems that we wanted to talk about. Uh, a couple of reminders is number one, um, our kit is very, very different from a lot of the um, others out there. We actually design our kit in-house um, with kind of do-yourselfers in mind. So it is slightly different from a professional kit. So keep that in mind. So our videos do, um, for the most part, especially like the bumpers, uh, work with uh, our kit only, right? So can it help you if you have a different kit? I'm sure it can, right? Because there's a lot of things that are the same and type of install, but just keep that in mind. Um, other reminders is, you know, make sure you're installing indoors. Um, that is like half the battle is like being in a clean environment and your garage, as long as it's well lit and it is nice, um, you know, it should be fine. So as long as it's indoors, um, one other tip that 
one of our customers mentioned was I bought a light, like an LED light uh, from Home Depot, and I use that so that I can really see. Um, that's a very, very good advice. Like get a really, really high lumen light, have it in your garage, and just by being able to see that, you'll be able to see the bubbles because the easiest way is to prevent them and see it before it kind of gets all settled, you know, when you're inspecting and then getting it out right away. Lastly, I'd like to remind you after an install, leave it indoors for, we say at least 12 hours, um, just to kind of let it settle and then inspect it the next day and making sure that it's all good. If this was helpful, please subscribe. Uh, we're coming out with a lot of PPF content and other content on a weekly basis. Let us know if you have other issues that you want us to talk about and how to resolve them. We'd be happy to make more videos around it. If not, we'll see you later and have a good one.